Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can see, we're having a beautiful day here in Hawaii today. Pristine conditions for catching solar. There's a thousand watts right now going into the power system. Everything's about full. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. So what I wanted to talk to everybody today in this off-grid story is is how I started. And what I started with uh, about 30 years ago was one lead acid battery similar to this. This is about 120 amp hours. And tied into that I had one 50 watt solar panel and one uh, about 25 amp uh, solar charge controller that was all automated no changing of parameters that was well uh, before i got into that level of having my own power system it was just super super basic it was one battery one solar panel one charge controller and i would use it for maybe uh, just watch a movie uh, on a little TV with a little VCR at the time and, or two movies and that would work and I was just as happy as could be with that. And I was not running any AC appliances whatsoever. Uh, I did not use an inverter. I did not even know what an inverter was back then. I ran nothing but 12 volt appliances, 12 volt TV, 12 volt VCR. Had them simply just with alligator clips going to the battery. But it planted the seed and got me on the path to energy independence. And back then, all solar components were extremely expensive. That first 50 watt solar panel I'm telling you about cost over $250 back then. And LED lights, things of the, that we're totally used to today and being very cheap, well, one similar to this back then was like $90, and I'm not exaggerating. It was because they were the first ones out. Now you can get a six pack of this for just a few dollars. So everything is so much cheaper. It's just unbelievable, and there's really no reason not to be supplementing some of your power, no matter where you live, by using the sun. There's just not a good argument for it anymore. Whatever you do, whatever size system you build, it's, it will reduce your costs for energy. Let alone how much better it is for the environment not to be hitting the grid. So on grid, off grid, somewhere in between, supply some of your own power. 30 years later, and I can tell you I still get a deep sense of satisfaction seeing the sun hit these panels and know that it's providing power for days just if the sun never came back out by capturing it storing it in batteries and you will learn the longer you do use the sun for your power needs and what you're trying to do you will adjust along the way as you become accustomed to what you're using Today you can build a system like this one here for under a thousand dollars, complete with solar panels. Maybe not that same size battery, but if you threw a, a 100 amp hour battery down in there instead of that 200, well, well under a thousand dollars to get charge controller, inverter, all the fuses and breakers, and a couple hundred, 300 watts of solar. 
you could do all of that for under a thousand dollars it would pay for itself in no time just if you started using it so you could put it in your garage and run your lights if you're on the grid you could use it to power up different appliances just a multitude of things that you could do for fairly cheap and it would pay for itself in relatively short time depending what you're using and then as you become accustomed to a smaller system and this I would consider a very small system very beginner friendly very easy plenty of you YouTube videos out there on how to just hook up a basic system like this and then right there you have your own little power system and you're starting to be more self-sufficient and a bigger system like this of course costs more money there's the fan kicking on it's pretty pretty warm back here so that inverter is just staying cool everything just about full and I'll let you see how that fan on a hot day still just runs a few seconds and cooling cooling <laughs> come on now quiet and there it just went off I just thought I'd show you a lot of you are using that particular inverter but anyway my point was that no matter what system you buy uh, this thing, compared to what energy costs out here, if I was tied to the grid, this thing and then has only been up a year and a half, roughly. And it's halfway to paying for itself, comparatively. And 30 years ago, the thought of running a full-size refrigerator freezer like this would have just been unthinkable because of the size of a system I would have had to build to run something like this. Not so anymore. One of these small standalone systems, either one of these that I have showed re uh, how they're operating here, uh, either one of those could run that refrigerator freezer 24 seven just by itself. You know everything's a lot more efficient as well those old compressor refrigerators were uh, power hungry not so much anymore very efficient it's like that one i've showed you in in other videos it's running right now it's pulling about 50 watts so even if you just built a small system to run a refrigerator wherever it may be in your house in your garage it's your spare refrigerator, it's your spare freezer. Build a little solar system and tie it in. So I know a lot of you that watch the channel are thinking about doing some solar. And I'm just encouraging you to do it. Start small, as small as you want. One battery, a couple of panels, a little inverter few more components and you you've started and spent very little money like I said out here in Hawaii we have very expensive uh, electricity prices it's usually top in the nation as far as how much it costs so I have no interest in tying up to the grid whatsoever uh, based on that and then also Hawaii is really supporting everybody to living with sustainable energy and doing solar. More and more the infrastructure in Hawaii, all the places are covered with solar panels, which is a breath of fresh air. Love seeing that. Private homes everywhere, rooftops full of solar. And with these kind of conditions, you can see why. Yeah, we get a lot of cloudy days here as well. But just build your system accordingly to your environment. You all know what you can basically expect where you are, and you know what your uh, energy requirements are. And if you don't, you will certainly learn in short order how much you're using and how much you can supplement. 
and you're going to be very happy about doing it. That's just the guaranteed part. It's pretty fun. So I hope you give you guys some good ideas. I just wanted to reflect a little about how I started almost 30 years ago and how it's grown and it certainly has grown lack for nothing all power needs are met gives me more time for walking around or sitting in the shade which I'm about to now because it's pretty darn hot so thanks for tuning in as as always this is part of that series I told you I was going to talk about off-grid stories where I can tie some of my past experience and how I got to where I am today. Never been without power one day on solar in 30 years. Not one day. Always had power. Never suffered a power outage. Yeah, I know more and more of you are doing that. I know a lot of people out here living 100% off-grid like I am. Lacking for zero power. All right, everybody. Aloha.